All right, with Jalen Bronson still cooking out here, you know, it's becoming a debate now. Uh, Dallas already said that they ain't, uh, they said that they are not, um, are they're not going to facilitate a signing trade for uh, Jalen Bronson. So, you know, I believe he is an unrestricted free agent. Also, believe that, uh, Zach Levine is a yeah, unrestricted free agent. So, um, it's really becoming down to them in free agency at guard, unless the Pistons plan on taking the guard. It's really coming down to them, um, you know, as the primary number one and number two targets, a one A, one B. The way Bronson playing is it, to the point where I think a lot of people, like, you know, they're starting to get sold. Now, you got a lot of people that's going to continue to hate on the move because he's not a name. But before, you know, Chauncey Billups came to Detroit, before, you know, Rip Hamilton came to Detroit, you know, you know, before those Ben Wallace came to Detroit, they wasn't named. Sometimes you got to be able to scout talent. You got to bank on, you know, putting them in the system and making them a name. All right. So, you know, like I said, it's a lot of people that, that talk on the Internet about basketball who don't know shit about basketball. That's the one thing the Internet always give people the opportunity to talk about some shit that they don't even know. And it's always some idiots that's going to agree. Like I said, I don't agree with nobody every time. You know, some it is something called healthy friction, right? But like I said before, these, these dudes are probably going to be their top two targets. And I'm not really looking at the guys uh, with the player options per se. Um, I'm not looking at them. You know, they become available and then, you know, that's a different conversation for a different, different day. But, you know, what it's really boiling down to is Bronson is playing itself into a bag. Now, will, you know um, – well, you know, Dallas go into the luxury, well, you know, go into luxury tax for him. And I think part of moving on for uh from uh what's the brother's name? Part of moving on from, you know, uh Christopher Zingas, you know, was trying to probably make room for him. You know, it was making room for a guy like Jalen Brunson. And like I said before, you know, when you talk about, you know, the guys that um come from Villanova, they tough. You know, you know, they come from that school. Jay Wright, he just retired. Shout out to him. They tough. You know, they gritty, they scrappy, they tough. And they might be undersized. But you know what, man? You can't measure, you can't measure uh their heart. That's what we can say. You can't measure those, those guys' heart. You know, think about that for a minute. You can't measure their heart, you know. So not the size of the dog, the size of the heart in the dog. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you're looking at. And Bronson playing, playing himself into a situation where he's going to make more money than, you know, what the name value say. But you're not you're not paying the name. You know what I'm saying? You're not paying the name. You know, yeah, he is unrestricted. So you're not so he can choose where you want to go. So you're not you're not paying the name. You paying you paying for the potential. And it's not like it's untapped potential. You know. You know, because. It's not just untapped potential. Because he he's showing that he he's showing that he can do it on this level. You know, he's showing he can break out. And I think, you know, even if they envision Kay Cunningham being the ball dominant, I still don't think, you know, he's gonna be as ball dominant. You know, I still don't think he's gonna be as ball dominant as Luka Donatich is there. And his ability to, you know, you know, play with the ball, play without the ball, play off the ball. That's you know, that's reportedly what the uh the Pistons like. You know, and then also, you know, if K getting some pro some trouble, he can he can run the show. That's something that like Philadelphia don't have, or some a few teams don't have. You know, I felt that was something wrong with Boston, was they really didn't have nobody to distribute the way they should should, you know. To, distru- to distribute, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, to kind of break it down, but, you know, they figured it out. So, with Bronson, you, you know, you you get the, you get the, you know, you get the double, you get the deal. You get the double dip. You get somebody that can play off the ball, and that's rare these days. You get somebody that can play with the ball, you know what I'm saying? So, and he can play with K. He played, you know, I think Luca. I'm willing to bet, which I'm not a big analytics guy, I'm willing to bet Luca probably got one of the most highest usage rates with the ball in his hand in the league. So I'm willing to bet that. I'm willing to bet that. So, so yep, his his usage rate is probably super duper high. 
you know, so, you know, some, something to think about. Definitely something to think about. So, so yeah, from that standpoint, yeah. But also, you know, on the other side of the pendulum with Zach Levine, he showed that, you know, he, he ain't like selfish like, uh, he ain't selfish like old boy. He ain't selfish like old boy. Um, what's my man's name? Like uh, Jeremy Grant. He showed that he let, he let, you know, DeMar DeRosa continue to shine. He showed that he could play with two ball dominant. Uh, he showed that he could play with two ball dominant players in Lonzo Ball shortly this season and DeMar DeRosa. And he showed that, you know, he's really a team player. And that's what he showed. He showed that he can play without the basketball. Now, B. Taylor said he's just a dunker. He's not just a dunker. You know, he can score. He can really score that rock. He can shoot it. I mean, you know, he's shooting, he's shooting the ball beautifully this year. And he, he and then also he another guy that, you know, he can run the show. And, you know, he can he can control, he can control the basketball. And he gives you that that versatility, um, you know, size-wise. Now, you know. When you get to dig deeper into, you know, deep defensively, when you dig deeper into it, you know, I think he needs to assert himself. That's the next jump for him to be MVP level is to assert himself uh, defensively. And that's where I think, you know, he might have Jalen Brunson, you know, he might have Jalen Brunson, you know, size-wise, you know, at 6'5", what he listened to. I'm still training the dog, so I'm not my her. She training the dog. So, you know, at 6'5", he got the size. But also, when I look at Jalen Bronson, you know, he got um, – Jalen Bronson has the – he's more gritty. You know what I'm saying? You see they shoot numbers 50% from the field, 37% from three. Uh, that's fine. 16.3% uh, points, 4.8 re- assists, 3.9 rebounds. But, you know, I think, you know, Bronson might be a little bit more scrappier um, – Defensively, more willingly defensively, you know what I'm saying? But Levine averaging more assists. So, I mean, you know, they both show the ability to play with and without the basketball. And if you're creeping up in that 25 to $30 million range, you know, you know, and you look at their credentials, this kid got the credentials and ability to bust out. And I think they both fit. They show the ability to be able to fit next to a bigger guard or ball-dominant guards, and they can get it how they want to get it. And you get in foul trouble, they can both go get you a shot. They can both facilitate. You know, but, you know, if you had to ask me, I'd probably shoot the dice and take the risk to take Levine. And you probably still could facilitate a sign and trade for, for Zach Levine. And that's what make it easier. I could send um, – I could send um, – I could send – you know, the reason you would want to do a sign and trade, right, for Zach Levine with Jeremy Grant, that's $20 million off the books right there. So 20, you know, you you trading 20 for, you know, he probably gonna make about 30. You probably trading 20 for about 30. So you still, so you still, you only gonna eat 10. I depend on what Levine get. I'm just saying 30 as a number. I don't know. But let's say you take him for 20 and he, he want 30 a year, you know, or, you know, the first year he want 30, right? Or however it go. You know, you still you only eat 10 of that cap you got up by trading, you know, let's say you want 40, you eat half of 20, you still got money left over. If you want around 30, you still got, you know. You know, with trading Grant, you still got about a ten million dollar difference. You see what I'm saying? You still got a ten million dollar difference. So you still you only eat ten of that money that you got up. And you know, do Chicago got a pick? Is the question? And they got number eighteen. You know, so you know they can send you eighteen and Zach Levine for Jeremy Grant. If they want somebody else, then you could you could talk about that. So you still can end up with a pick. And we also already talked about scenarios where. They still can feel the team in this scenario without giving up a pick, too. So, like I said before, you know, would you want to outright take a sign Zach Levine and then you can trade, you know, Jeremy Grant for assets? Yeah, you still can do that and still end up in the lottery. But either, but both ways how they benefit. If you sign and trade for Zach Levine or, you know, let's say sign and trade for Zach Levine, cool. You still got more money left over under the cap. You still, you only save in this scenario if you get 30 a year for year one and 20. You only get ten, eat up ten in that cap. Then the question was, can I move? Can can I move Kelly Olynyk without having to take a contract back or a large contract back? If I can move Kelly Olynyk's contract in this scenario, you know, if I can move his contract and he making like I think I'm pulling up. I think he making about. I think he making about thirteen. I don't know why I blew up that big. My bad, y'all. I think he making about yeah, almost like twelve. 
almost 13. So let's round up, say he making 13. If I can take somebody to take that 13, so I still got 15, and then you, you know, you damn near got 30 million dollars. You, you got more cap space than before you started the offseason. I could take somebody to absorb this number, maybe for a second or for a lower level player, it's worth 500 million, two million. I still I got about 30 million dollars more, more to spend. So now in that scenario, I could turn around and if I wanted to, I can offer I can end up with Bronson and Levine, which you know is not likely. If I wanted to, I could end up and go pay Mo Bamba or y'all like DeAndre Ayton or whoever else out there. I can go out there and, and end up with another big fella. So I can bring in two brief free agents. In that scenario, you bring in Bronson or Levine, you bring in Mohammed Bamba, Bamba, and then you add Apollo Brancho, or you add, you know, whoever y'all like, Shaq, uh, Shake, Shake Shaq Homegroom, or is it Apollo, whatever, then hey, you change your team right away. So you go K, Levine, or or Brunson in the backcourt with him. You know, you still got Sadiq Bay. Let's say you move on from Jeremy Grant. You know, when that Levine signed a trade, let's say Dallas changed their mind in that sign and trade. You add Paolo at that four, you add Shad at the four, and then you put Mo at the five. You know, she, you know, it's a totally different team. Now you lose like Olenek off the bench, his ability to shoot. That's hard, but hey, you throw Marvin Bagley on the bench. You know what I'm saying? You hopefully you end up with somebody else that can defend the rim off the bench. You still got Isaiah Livers, you still got Killian Hayes. And maybe you might have a couple of dollars left over to end up with, you know, Malik Monk to help you a little bit. So it's interesting, man. But uh, right now, man, um, if I'm a, if I'm a pay if I'm a pay premium dollar for one of these dudes, and it's either one or the other, and that's who is that's who it could come down to. It's probably gonna be Zach Levine. But I would like to see Zach Levine defend a lot better, bro. I like to see him more willing defender. But happy with either one. But I'm gonna pay that type of money. I'm gonna go with Levine, who got the credentials, and like I said, you know, he probably want to get at Chicago too. So that might work, but hey, let me know what you girls and guys think. Check Detroit Pistons Talk playlist out. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe button. It's the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live, we'll drop a video. Financially, you can support Cash App, Dollar Sign, CJ31313, Venmo, CJ31313, PayPal in the description. Other than that, just keep sharing, commenting, all that stuff. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. One time for one time. Peace.